Cool. Hey. Hello all. Thanks for tuning in. Nice to see so many people in the Discord. Um, you can also watch watch this on YouTube and feel free to comment in any questions. Um, yeah, we got the the update the next week. Uh, next week of updates to the big shared project, virtual production shared project. Um, this shared project is just aiming to give you some kind of example configs, some like easy project setups to just download. You, know, you can download this totally free project and just use it as an awesome template, a basis to jump off of really. Um, so we're going to do these uh, for the live streams. We do these live streams every week. So every single week I'll just be showing any updates I've made. Sometimes there'll be big groundbreaking updates, sometimes it'll be little bits. Um, but also just the main thing about this is that it's so key that we get uh, feedback from people at every stage of this. You know, like I want to see if what I'm making is actually useful to people. Um, if it's useful, if it's uh, if it's going by these workflows that you guys want to want to do, um, if it's answering questions, making stuff easier, then um, you know I'm doing something right. So it's awesome to have any feedback, any any uh, any input throughout this. So that's why I'm kind of making a massive effort to stream every single week and just show you any updates, big or small, really. Um, so yeah, awesome to see you guys tuning in. Uh, as as I say, yeah, on on every week, and uh, Jen's got her awesome uh, virtual virtual human side of stuff uh, on on Wednesdays at the same time. So you know, three o'clock Wednesdays and Thursdays, you have some amazing amazing stuff to watch. And as I say, it's just awesome to be streaming this stuff out. Uh, please do jump in the chat either on YouTube. Uh, or on the Discord, and just throughout this, I'll keep an eye on that chat and just yeah, chat about chat about this virtual production studio things we're adding, and yeah, if we can take it in an awesome, super useful direction, then that's amazing. So, just got a question from DJ: Are you looking into adding tracked camera support? Uh, you have a DS80 camera. I'd love to set up with a real-world cam to go a tracked cam. Totally. Um, looks like Julian's jumping in here. We have literally just been talking about. Uh, sort of live link, live link input. So I've been doing it. I've been looking at doing it with just a phone for now because I don't have I don't have a camera and camera tracker at home at the moment. Um, definitely looking at getting hands on with that and like finding the best best methods for that. Um, but yeah, like tracked camera support is totally uh, totally good. But uh, if you can if you can get a tracked camera into your into your scene. Um, I was just trying it out just now, and I was just struggling with the whole uh, uh, firewall stuff. You know, I was just like opening the app, and it was just like not really, uh, not receiving the messages. Um, but I have just been looking into this trap camera stuff. If you can get it working, um, you can literally just uh, make that tracked camera uh, the target camera actor, and. Um, any any tracked camera movement that goes on, these uh, video plane placement actors will still keep your talent um, situated, stood in one place in 3D space. So you really still don't get like any slippage. Um, the media plate is, is totally solid, even for tracked cameras. Because I did have it, I did have it working a few days ago. Well, maybe a couple of months ago now. Even it was one of the early tests we did because you know tracked cameras is vital. So pixel streaming with Offworld, that's a, that's a cool question. Um, I mean, you can, you can, I mean, also I was literally just testing this, you can pixel stream out, you know, um, you can pixel, you can pixel stream a, view, a vcam, a vcam out. Um, I guess, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're asking, cue the, cue the fog, are you asking sort of directly, you know, from a, from an Offworld camera, you know, like, click on this. I guess you could do something like adding a VCAM element as a child to this and pixel streaming out, but I mean maybe we could chat more specifically about what exactly you'd want to do with that pixel streaming and how you'd want to get that out. Be really cool.
Uh, and then Julian's just saying, okay, cool. Sharing a cool, cool real sense, real sense um, thing there. Awesome to see everyone sharing each other's stuff in this chat as well. It's definitely, this is the place for that, you know. Um, so thanks, Julian. Thanks for that. Yeah, like, so I guess updates, updates to the kind of shared project. If anyone's sort of watched the last few, um, I was getting quite deep into HUD uh, and having this kind of heads up display that comes up when you press play and you can sort of control it all uh, via the HUD. But what I've actually decided to do is, uh, it's again like a workflow thing, it's like do these workflows work work for everyone. Um, I've decided to, for now, um, pair it back a little bit. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just pair back the project a little bit. Again, it's kind of a, uh, a workflow thing I, I it was just getting a bit I had like you know options to have multiple screens right off the bat um, it, it was getting a bit like complex uh, and I do want this to be something where you know if you're quite savvy like uh, if you're fairly savvy in Unreal Engine and like you want to get you want to get hands on like you can actually use the Unreal Engine editor um, then I just want this to be like a layer where you know it sorts out the composure for you um, so I mean down the line I want HUD to be a thing for this um, but I think it's just a lot later a lot later of a stage really so I'm gonna put out uh, that the idea is by the end of this week I think I'm gonna work on this on Saturday as well to um, put out something where uh, you can download it and if you've got a bit of a bit of experience with Unreal Editor then you can then you can add your own stuff and I'm gonna pair it with a load of tutorials you know so the I idea is you would be able to open this project um, at the moment I've just got uh, this one media plate with the talent and this is just coming in as a spout spout input because I've been getting sort of uh, un unreliable results with the uh, with the regular media player you know like the media player in Unreal Engine I just find it really unreliable like you have to restart it all the time sometimes it will like not find the source files that you pointed it from so I've just been doing a spout input pass for now because that can just, as long as I've got OBS open, so I'm sending it from, that can just loop indefinitely. So at the moment I've just got the media plate with spout input. And you know, you can make this an NDI input, or you know, your media texture compositing input, use your like black magic, black magic or Azure in. So that's just what I've got going in. This is going through the chroma keying. Um, D spill erode. Got this cropping material, which is quite useful, which I've just just made. You know, it's just um, something that's people have people have found useful. You know, you might want to crop crop that stuff if you've got you know a green screen in the corner of your room, and you know you've got the you got the room coming in to the right. Yeah, so that that's a useful material which we've got in the project that I've just whipped to get whipped together really. Um, what else have we got in here? You just got a couple of uh, effects that I've just I'm just not using at the moment. You know, wacky VHS effect things like that. So that's like the that's the talent side of things. You know, the idea is that if you have a solid green screen, um, you you uh you should be able to just chuck your media in, and you might not need to tweak even tweak the keying that much. You know, I've tried this with a few different green screen things and. You know, you can get a pretty good key in Unreal. Um, it's kind of advised that you key pre-key with like a hardware keyer or use pre-keyed footage. It's generally advised in Unreal that you do that. The keyer is not mad strong, but might might serve the purpose for a lot of your uses, a lot of people's uses. So then, like this media plate, after it's been keyed, um, it's now being outputted to a render target. So I've now just got this, this render target and it's got the alpha channel, so that's awesome. And that output with the alpha channel is what you see here. So I've just got this in-game CG, CG version of my comp. But obviously when I'm in my actual comp, it's being overlaid uh, by this layer. So I've got, got my nice composited media instead of the kind of in-game media play, which is obviously blurry and smudgy. 
that's the whole reason we're using composure in the first place is we, we can't just use this media plate going straight in been some awesome people doing some awesome stuff with DLSS and stuff like that such as Captain Steel Pants he's got some amazing quality out of just in-game footage but bottom line is you know if you're shooting talent and you want that mad good quality you're gonna have to do some compositing because it just it's a render pipeline thing you know it's gonna go through anti-aliasing and smudging uh, if you don't use this composure setup so I just got another question from Julian awesome uh, interesting to see how to play with color compensation lighting as to say when you're in real time it's more complex than just showing a video using open color IO yeah so I think again this is something that will be um, something that I can show off a lot more uh, or, or dive into a lot more solidly when I have my own kind of black magic input or something because uh, because for me um, I actually I've actually played around with using OCIO and uh, color spaces and for me it's actually just um, easier to just send in a spout feed uh, and then just use like uh, render target compositing output or player viewport compositing output um, so like the color space conversion um, I know it is totally something that if you're filming in from a camera it's totally essential but for me like I've just been getting visibly not two different results um, but totally really key thing to look at when I when I get to the point of having you know a, a different camera input a live camera input but it's, it's something I'm going to set up in a couple of weeks I expect but the, the ACIO thing is, is very cool um, I think what um, what I will do with this shared project is just have the uh, initial LUTs uh, so the, I think I did have it in here at one point. It's definitely an interesting topic, yeah. Um, Cause yeah, yeah. I was I was actually struggling for a little while to find just the regular RGB to, um, what is it? Uh, uh, linear color space. Cause like you know, apparently everything in Unreal is linear color space. You need to go from RGB into Unreal's linear color space and then linear color space uh, out again to RGB or the color space of your monitor so that you can get the colors, colors perfect. So I was thinking of just including in here the files for just the regular RGB to linear because um, that's kind of the basis of what you'll be doing and then I guess you can go into the OCIO website and download any further LUTs for what you might need. You know. Yeah, awesome, Grander. Uh, is that the kind of thing you do for your for your OCIO for ins and outs? You know, you go from camera color space to linear, and then linear out to RGB or something like that. I think I'm right in thinking that's the kind of workflow for it. Uh, I what? Yeah, I was for a little while struggling to find just the regular, just regular straight sRGB to linear. Um, but I I did I did find it on the OCIO website eventually. But I just thought that might be something useful to include in here, just in a folder, so you have at least a a OCIO config file just ready in the project. So I think I'll just include that. Something to include. So. When uh, so that's like sort of the composure setup. Oh, thanks, Grandy. Yeah, that'd be cool. Be cool to have one that you know, you know, works for you. Yeah. Yeah, but um, so I was sort of at this stage of you know I've made that key of the character, uh, sort of, of the talent, and I've got this flat flat image out, you know, for this render target with some alpha. That render target can just go directly into my sort of in CG, in CG area, and that's used for my reflections and stuff. It's not super visible with this material, but reflections and shadows cast by the talent. That's why I've got this in-game sort of uh, element as well. And that's just taking 
this render target as an input, just the material. And you know you can you can grab this material if you want, but if if you've if you've downloaded this project, um, you this will all be set up. You know it will you can change your input here, and it will just directly go onto this material in real time. So it's just another reason that the kind of project is nicely set up for you. This uh, render target, as well as going out to here, the same render target is going to the Alplane transform. Uh, sorry, to the second media plate, which all this media plate is doing, it's taking in the render target and it's doing the Alplane transform. Because we wanted we wanted this, this flat render target, so it goes here, and then we want to use that same flat render target to do the transform. If we sent this out, then we would get an extra small person here, you know. So that's cool, that's all for talent, and I've just got one other screen here just for the back screen got my cg which having a weirdness with the colors blowing out this isn't an ocio thing this is a updating to 5.2 thing um total weirdness going on i've had this before you update to unreal 5.2 and all your emissive materials are way too strong way too bright um so you just have to relight all of your levels after upload up upgrading um don't know if anyone else has got that. It'd be cool to hear people's thoughts on that. If so, because it's weirding me out. It's weirding me out, and it's you know I hate I hate the idea that it's scary to upgrade to a new Unreal. You know, like it shouldn't be scary. You should just <laughs> be able to just go update, good to go. But yeah, it's a scary thing for lots of people. Um, but there's there's the kind of output. As I say, like I, tweet, I would love to tweak the lighting a bit, but I've just been at the moment just um, yeah dealing with this update. But basically what you see is you've got, if you see the difference with the media, you've got the awesome, awesome, way better talent. Um, and you've got a nice screen, which, you know, again, compared to this, it's like, you can actually read the text on there and everything. It's ideal. Really, really cool. Um, I don't know if I'm getting a little bit of flickering there with the moving the screens, but work in progress. Work in progress. I've been... Meddling with uh, DLSS at the moment as well because it's, it's going to be such a useful tool for this compositing stuff. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen all the hoo-ha about DLSS at the moment. Um, DLSS 3 coming out, uh, which has got some awesome, awesome features doing like a frame frame interpolation as well as this, uh, you know, temporal upscaling um, or deep learning kind of upscaling. Deep learning super sampling. Uh, yeah, it's doing frame interpolation as well, so it will like it will skip out every few frames and use the AI to create that frame. So that's just craziness that I'm really excited about. But um, yeah, DLSS is proven very very useful. Uh, we so much so that we are uh, soon implementing it as a screen percentage slider. So the new DLSS, uh, I haven't got DLSS enabled here because it's a 5.2 project uh, I haven't got a 40 series graphics card I think there's a bit of contention as to whether you actually need a 40 series graphics card for this um, but as it stands I don't have the new DLSS enabled but usually what you do when you have the new DLSS is that you can just lower your screen percentage so like say put it to like 50 uh, and um, wait, it looks like I am getting some upscaling. That's pretty weird. Should not be the case. Perhaps this is overriding or something. Mm, let me double check that. Try demo this in here instead. You basically like lower the screen percentage so that the image quality is lower, but then the uh, the, the, the algorithm, it's using some part of the GPU uh, to upscale that image using deep learning. So it's kind of like, uh, I think it's something like they've been fed loads of images of what video game graphics should be looking like. So it can see a low res, a low res version. Maybe, maybe it's because I was piloting this. No, I'm seeing like no change in that. That's weird. 
But yeah, you can see a low res version and then it will upscale it and that is actually using less resources uh, to do that upscaling than actually just rendering the full image. So essentially you're rendering like a, a small portion, say you've got 50%, you're actually rendering half the screen size, but then DLSS upscales it to 1920 by 1080 again. So the performance impact of that is really amazing. Um, and that's why uh, that's why we think it's really, really important to implement this in the Composure workflow as well, because uh, Composure, you need as much overhead as you can get, really, because um, it's quite it's quite resource heavy, as I'm sure a lot of you that have tried out this stuff know. Um, it gets pretty resource heavy. So we have implemented these uh, DLSS sliders or upscaling sliders within the OWL. LCG element. So you'll be able to add in this LCG element and change the screen percentage here. And we've got two different screen percentage sliders because the LSS actually operates at two stages of the render pipeline. So you can change these, um, you can play around with these and see combination of sliders that works for you. For me, I've been playing around with like what's the best visual quality I can get for the lowest, lowest kind of percentage, screen percentage. Uh, they'll give me a good frame boost um, while still looking exactly the same as the viewport, you know, not being too uh, low res kind of thing, not losing too much. It's really, really subtle here. I'm not sure if I'm getting like the results I should be getting in this current version, to be fair. So 25% being the lowest. Um, yeah, I guess when we make this bigger, you can see that like it looks like a low res version of the kind of game if you if you do it too low. Uh, and I I find this secondary screen percentage, it just like savages your visual uh, without actually improving the frame rate too much. So it's a bit of a balancing act. You want to see like so if I'm at hundred, if I'm at hundred percent, I'm getting twenty, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. If I'm at 50%, immediately getting over 30, looking at upwards of 37. So I've nearly gained, you know, 8 to 10 frames from lowering that screen percentage, yet my visual output looks just as good. So this is this is some real mind-blowing stuff, DLSS, um, and it's, it's something we're so going to pursue as like a thoroughly integrated part of our kind of composure workflow. And uh, yeah, TLSS, super exciting. Really, really looking forward to seeing like how that how that all goes, kind of thing. Uh, so Julian's asking what happens when we use 4K or higher in our actor video. So like this uh, this talent kind of thing, I guess. Um, uh, what happens <laughs> is a is an interesting one. I guess it's um, it's possible. It's possible to get in. Um, and it's a case of you know can you can you optimize your scene? Can you use something like DLSS for for that? Um, uh, I I would say I would say if you yeah I would say give it a go if your machine can handle it. Um, I'm sure you can get a media plate of like 4K in pretty happily. DLSS slider is something in an upcoming version. Uh, I believe we haven't. Uh, release this update yet? No. So sneak peek. Um, sneak peek. Uh, it's very yeah. It's, hap it's it's coming pretty soon. I th I th I'm pretty sure we're like really nearly there with it. It's just totally quite a simple thing to implement. So should save some frames. Should be out pretty soon. I wish I could uh, demo this a bit more clearly, but like, I guess I guess you can see that you know, you can see that once you pass a point, it's like literally, it's just downscaling the video, you know, so it's smaller, and then um, as a result of that, smaller, if you can get it to a point where it is downscaling a bit, like seventy percent, sixty-seven percent, it's downscaling it a bit, but it's not you're not losing the visual quality. That means you're getting a good kind of use of DLSS there, and you should save some frames. Um, yeah, DLSS free, looking forward to that. Another weirdly uh, 
Another cool use of DLSS is you can actually kind of overclock it. Uh, I have not. I'm not going to do it right now because I um, will probably crash my computer. I've not worked it very well. But if you go over 100%, it's actually doing the reverse, where it's uh, it was still a 1920. Sorry, still a 1920 by 1080 image as your final output or whatever resolution you set. But it's uh, it's making it bigger before the final final render, and then it's downscaling it. So you can, so you can actually sorry, you can actually get um, uh, what's it called? You know, like uh, higher visible quality. Um, it's the term they use, like in uh, uh, in like downscaling video to send over the internet and things like that. It's like uh, you know, it gives the illusion of lossless, or you know, it gives the illusion of a higher quality video. Um, it's packing more information in uh, if you go over a hundred percent. You know, so it's like it's like reading from say a 4K texture if you did 200%, uh, and it's it's compacting com compacting all of that information down into a 1920 by 1080 image. So you actually need to, you can actually do like overclocking upscaling as well, which is quite cool. So if your machine can handle it, that's worth having a look at because you might remove some of these little artifacts and things and get you know like a really really nice render. Um, also worth looking into like upscaling for sequencer as well because that's Totally something you can do for renders if you're, if you're looking at renders, but yeah, really, really cool. Um, I guess also another another few things, I guess, back to just like using this project. As I say, I'm going to have a load of tutorials out once we get this next kind of uh, project example out. But with this idea that like things might be a little more in editor at this stage um, before I'm just before we get into like making everything super HUD ready, uh, we're going to make it sort of like editor usable. So there's going to be a few kind of techniques that I'm going to try work out, such as here I've just got this blueprint, which is um, a kind of controller. So There's a level loader blueprint. Um, I'll just show you like what it does. It's like um, so it's got this intro sequence. You can see nice 50 frames per second on that, which is cool. I'm getting a little bit of smearing around here because of the upscaling, I think. So it's like the lower res image is kind of bleeding out, but again, it's something we can figure out. Um, so for the level loading thing, I've just got, you know, one key loads one level, three key loads another level, you know, one, two, three. You can switch the levels. It's a functionality I had in there before, but just the implementation of how you would implement this in your own kind of project is slightly different. Um, all you've got to do is just like find this actor, find this level loader, and I've just made a bit of an array here, so you can just choose levels that you want loaded. So I guess could just test something out. Actually, I mean, I'll, I'll test this out and make sure this is nice and usable. It might be that you need to load the level into here as well as into here, but. I shouldn't think so, I shouldn't think so, but you might want to even if it's in editor. This is stuff I'll outline in a nice tutorial. But it's just nice to have this blueprint here that just takes in this array of levels. You can pick your levels, and then whatever levels are picked in these three, that's the one, two, and three key uh, once you began play, so you can use that to switch. Um, let's just see like if I make this one Studio D. Yeah, it won't update in editor right away, so that's got to be, for now, got to be used in tandem with these show and hides. I'll see if there's like a nicer system for that I can work on. But now that I've selected this here, this should be the first one that loads up, uh, even if it's like not visible from here. Yeah, so that Studio D is the first one that loads up on Begin Play. So, you know, really, really easy to get your own switch out for your own levels, your own media. So I want more systems like that where it's like, you know, in editor still, but it's just uh, front facing a little easier to use for a lot of people. Hopefully like uh, getting that middle ground of being useful, but not kind of, uh, not kind of um, limiting like what you want to do. You can still keep it quite, uh, Quite uh, creative, do your own stuff in it. Is that that middle ground? So 
So it's got another another comment here. I'd like to ask about the borders of the media plate. Once you change the percentage, they look worse. Uh, yeah, so... Um, borders of this screen, I definitely, I definitely see that. Um, I think it is, again, this kind of balancing act of... Um, how much screen percentage you can get away with while getting the desired um, effect. Uh, I wouldn't say that's a wrong impression. Um, I would say like it's just something you're going to have to try out in your own project. Um, I've been getting some weirdness over the past couple of days with uh, things being a bit more like you see that kind of shaking in the screen. Um, it's something I'll get, I'll get I'll get super stable before I put put this out. Um, but it, it can differ sort of machine to machine. Uh, I think this is something to look out for though, DLSS wise, with your screen percentage. Um, if you go too low, um, say I'm like super low on this, uh, for me, these in-game media plates, they'll have more smeariness um, and smudginess. And so, just wait for a minute where she really kind of flaps, like moves about quite a lot, like this here. You get a bit of a trail there. And so because of this comp setup, the way that she's still visible, even though she's like behind the nice footage. Um, I'll show you here. It means you, you can get edges. You can get these smearing and things around the edges. Um, this is something I've, I've sort of flagged up with the other people at Off World. And um, if there's anything we can do, then that'd be really cool. I think about like maybe workflow wise things we can do as well. Maybe there's a different way to kind of crop these edges, but yeah, that is a result of the lower quality video being behind the nice high quality media plate. You know, you've got your kind of smeary image uh, behind something that's super nice. So there is, there is a bit of a balancing act there or a workflow that we can figure out that can um, perhaps kind of alpha mask some more of that. Um, it's a tricky one with the render pipeline and it's kind of something you have to uh, you have to find like a, a bit of a balancing act for. And I guess, you know, it's quite clear in this, but I guess that does sort of go for these kind of media, media plates as well. There might be a bit of edging smearing, but it's, yeah, it's stuff I'm looking at, like this kind of balance between the visual effect, getting the, the visual quality that you want, but then getting that performance boost, you know, do you necessarily need this overhead of like, you know, 50 frames per second or are you looking at just like 24 to 30 frames per second? If so, do you need DLSS? One awesome benefit of DLSS is that you have more overhead though, you know, so you can have more triggered events, more cool things going on in your scene because you're saving those frames. Um, I, would, I would maybe even lean towards hiding this uh, hiding this in CG version if I was really struggling with these because I don't actually have her in any reflections and stuff at this time. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a specific project uh, slash workflow kind of thing, you know. But... Um, yeah, for all these kind of workflow things, uh, so I was sort of doing that more in editor style instead of having everything on a HUD for you. I'm going to have a few blueprints in here where you can do things like load levels. I may also do one so when you begin play, you've got like this sequence that zooms out. So I guess a lot of people will want like a kind of intro sequence uh, and then they might want um, a kind of idle camera sequence and then they might want to switch to you know camera one, camera two, stuff like that. So what I might do is do a similar thing where you can create your own sequences and then load them into a blueprint actor and just drag them into here and you can have, you know, sequence one, sequence two, sequence three and that would all just be triggered off of the kind of key presses. Um, again, let me know if that's like something you want or you're just happy to just load your own sequences. Maybe it's like spending too much time on something that's not super useful to you guys, but yeah, be good to have your feedback as to whether whether that's a cool feature. Uh, minimum minimum GPU to get a decent FPS from this project. 
Um, I've run it on a 2070. Um, so that's the minimum that I've run this on. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you can go lower than that. Um, I know, I know it's not, I got someone to run it on a laptop. Um, it was, you know, running, running 25 to 30 still. Uh, I would say something around that, you know, I know you can get away with it with a 2070. Um, I know that for sure, but Uh, it is very GPU heavy, you know, because you are you are rendering this whole CG capture. That's sort of the main main kicker, you know. I hide that and should get a bit of an increase. Hide the mat, yeah. Hide the mat as well, and look, I'm I'm up at like eighty, ninety, eighty or ninety. So you know, it's uh, it's these two elements that are doing all the taking all the resources really. Um, but you can do stuff like because you've got this rendering here, you can do stuff like hide viewport rendering uh, and then just uh, output this to like a render target if you want um, turn off the player viewport put it out to a render target um, and you know I'm looking at like 60, 60 odd frames per second now which is great and you know that render target can go out to wherever you want to stream out or you know, you can do your uh, direct to write this direct to disk from this render target. Um, you know, you can just do that with our media output, media output actor. Our media output, drag that in uh, and just tell that to take in that render target that you just outputted. And then, you know, I could just uh, enable that plugin by the looks of it. <laughs> uh, and uh, just start uh, start this uh, but you can uh, you can set this you go save to file you know, set your destination uh, and then you can just do start and stop and just save little clips you know um, and that'll just take that from this render target so that's a nice 1920 by 1080 image uh, I think you know even if I'm just resizing this preview I'm pretty sure that's still run well, that's an interesting one actually. <laughs> Could see what the output see what changes with the output there. But uh you know there's a few there's so much you can do with, you know, media in and out with render targets and sending render targets here and there that there's a million different uses. I know some people just send this render target straight out to OBS by spout and uh save the video in OBS, you know, just record the video. Um but yeah, media output pretty cool as well. Mm, that is well. That is a good observation, Julian. You know that FPS does go go down when recording because it's writing. You know, it's writing something to disk uh, at the time. I guess you know um, it's another process. You're literally saving a saving a video. I don't know if. I mean, maybe that's a good shout for your OBS option. You know, you can get that. You can get that high FPS out from Unreal. And then if you can run OBS at the same time, then then save that. Then yeah, it's a good it's a good option as well. You know, I have not inv enabled this hardware encoders plugin. Can see if that see if that helps things. Yeah, hope you're um hope you're enjoying just this uh this stream showing you these little bits and bobs. Um hopefully have a nice nice next wave of a project to put out by the end of this week with some tutorials and just have to like swap your own media into this stuff. So you know, these streams are all about 
Oh, sorry, I've got stuff going on outside, but it's so hot here, I need to have the window open. <laughs> One moment. Yeah, yeah, just as I say, you know, these streams are just aiming to be a place to just share these ideas, you know, I learn so much checking out all these comments, it's, it's just like the most beneficial thing is just to um, get all of your input at every stage of making this project um, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully at the end of this week we'll put out a little shout out to say that um, the next, next little phase of this project is out, um, but it's, it's a work in progress. Uh, but it's just, you know, aiming to just make it so that you can jump in, swap in your own level, swap in your own media, and not have to do any of the long kind of composure setup. I think I'll show you how, if you want to add another screen, how you can add that in, but it's all still going to be transform passes that I've made already. Just pick from the transform passes uh, for your own kind of use cases. Add things like that in a much quicker way without actually having to jump into the... Uh, jump into the nitty gritty of like the material setup and stuff like that. Um, Julian, I'm uh, using version 200, um, so this is a little pre-release version that I'm just using for staging, just to use that uh, CG element of the, of the screen percentage and stuff like that. So I'm just testing out testing out DLSS at the moment, so yeah, that's why I'm using that version. So should we, should we test out this media output again? It's an interesting one. It's definitely gonna, it's gonna lower. It's definitely gonna lower. But let's see if like up, uh, updating that thingy will help. Got my render target going out. So when I hit start, it's, it's a lot better, isn't it? Thirty-seven odd. 30, seeing 36s, 35s, yeah, it's much better. Yeah. So media output, pretty damn good. I mean, you know, it's potentially less resource heavy than having a whole other program open, such as OBS. That was the idea of having this media output, you know, in the actual in the actual UE project. Um, but yeah, this is um, updates. Updates to the project, just kind of stripping it back a bit. I think I was going too hard with loads of HUD stuff. Uh, I think down the line we'll have a nice HUD so it can just be a standalone kind of game. But um, I think for now, stripping it back, pairing this with some tutorials of how to get it going. Um, hopefully the shared project can be really powerful. Uh, I'm just gonna um, tune off in a little bit. Um, Anyone's got any final questions before I jump off? You know, it's an awesome place to share these thoughts. But thank you everyone for tuning in. Really, really cool to see so many people jumping in. And it's nice to hear you're interested in the in the whole system, in the whole composure system and in the uh, in the shared project really. Hopefully get a lot of people up and running super quick. We've had a few kind of requests and uh, a few workflows that people have been sort of asking about and um, they've given me some awesome ideas for like tutorials to pair with this project, uh, like changing the output to NDI, um, uh, switching between live link camera and uh, like like Vcam controlled camera and regular camera, you know, like a switch like that so you can have an intro animation and then jump into virtual control camera. Um, awesome ideas like this coming through and it just helps me uh, know what know what's useful to people in a project like this so you know keep those coming it's awesome to hear your feedback and yeah thanks so much thanks so much for jumping in same time next week and yeah thanks for the support guys thanks so much yeah I'll be here next week and then also awesome VTuber one from Jen next week on the uh, on the on the VTuber side of things next week on Wednesday same time yep same time next week every week cheers Julian thanks for all your input um, thanks so much Violent Pixelation awesome name and Cover de Bonnet uh, thanks 
Yeah, thanks a lot for your input. Be here again next week. <laughs>